Hello, so I just wanted to show anybody who's interested uh, some of the diversity of things that I made with my first 500 gram roll of copper filament from the virtual foundry. And if you don't know, this is filament that's like 90% copper uh, metal, and you can print it and use it like that, or you can burn out the plastic and then sinter the metal together. So let's just start from, mm, let's just start from one corner. So these guys are, um, these are I-beams. So, you know, like architectural I-beams. And I made these as one of my standards just to see if, you know, I can get it to print right or consistently. This is a green part. So it's not, you know, it doesn't really feel like metal, but it is heavy. And this is what comes out of the printer. Here's an example of a good print. So this is with very little warpage and it's strong, sounds like metal. And then going from left to right, we have increasing meltage. So these are at higher and higher temperatures. Until this one, if you look at it under a microscope, it's almost completely different. It looks pretty cool. Maybe I'll have a cut of that. And then this is an example of, this is an improperly sintered part. This is actually extremely fragile. And this is the part that's had the plastic removed and you can actually see some of the copper melted away, but it's not, you know, like really good. So this is an example of a part that didn't really work so well. Here's an example of, I was trying to make like a tooth, you know, cause I am in the department of biomedical engineering. This is my friend, my friend Daniel, my first attempt at making him. Uh, he, he looks like a monster. And then this is my next attempt. And I'd point out that um, the lower the temperature, uh, over time, the more it darkens up, which I think might be something to do with surface area. But either way, all of these parts eventually darken up. So here's an example of a part that didn't dark, hasn't darkened up yet because I washed it uh, today with acid. Uh, hydrochloric acid and this is actually supposed to be a nut and bolt combo and it's kind of hard to do with one hand but <laughs> you can actually see it doesn't really work it does roll down but that's because even though these were printed at the same size like they shrank them correspondingly in the slicer uh, and you can see the you can you can actually you know see the fine detail it's, they shrink at different rates. And so that's one of the big problems with this is theoretically in industry, you can get it very consistent, but you have to make several tries to get a good shrink. Um, you know, cause the shrink is a little, can be a little wonky. Um, but the detail is preserved really well. And I think if I did corresponding, I just redo the nut. Um, I think you actually could use this as like a bolt. It wouldn't be the best bolt, not very efficient, but it does work. Moving on, here were just like a couple of rings I tried to make. Didn't really work so great, but you know, they're copper, they're metal. Here are standard cubes that I made. So these are just like, um, you know, calibration cubes, you know, X, Y, Z. And again, this is temperature increasing from bottom to top. So you've got uncentered part and then right temperature and then warmer until this point, it's just like a blob, again, with interesting crystals, but not really so useful if you're trying to make something with, you know, dimensional constraints. Here's uh, another example. Here's actually an example of another improperly centered part. This is what happens if you don't have enough carbon in the crucible and the carbon scavenges oxygen and prevents the part from basically being cooked because um, we're not using any special atmosphere. And so uh, the part was eaten away and then anything that's left over time became very, you know, oxidized, carbonated, um, like with the patina. Here's another example of that. This is actually my head. And so you can see my head has been totally fried. It's been melted to a blob and it's been melted to absolutely nothing. This is way too high of a temperature. And then the green part, the filament actually prints really well. Once you get it dialed in, the filament is actually fantastic. Like the quality, the, like the surface finish you can get. And I've heard that it sculpts really well. Whoops. I didn't really balance these so well though. 
Uh, and then here is an example of what I consider to be a good centered part. What's next? It just, oops, oh no! We've got, you know, just little rings, little miscellaneous things. Uh, this is an infinity cube, so this is one of those things that's like really annoying if you were to gonna try and, you know, CNC this or some other me method. Sounds cool. I made this today. This is a cutaway of a aero spike nozzle for a rocket engine. And I printed this, I did an experiment where I printed it hollow and we can see it didn't, you know, it caused some not great qualities there. Um, but, you know, I think it gets the point across. Um, so this will, this will be a cool thing to show people, especially once it darkens up, it'll actually disguise some of the defects. We've got dog bones. So I use these for tensile tests. So I'm trying different print orientations and different, uh, different um, temperatures, things like that. And, you know, these are examples of dog ones that haven't been broken apart, and then many more that have been. So, a lot of what, actually, we haven't, we haven't seen a lot of the failures. So, a lot of the parts that I've broken apart or have been sent away for, like, chemical analysis, I haven't gotten back. So, you know, maybe 10 to 20% of all the things I printed are missing, especially these kinds of stuff. And then early on, like, these debounding, debinding experiments, I broke these apart. I didn't save these. This is the only one I hear I have saved. So actually I do in here, bear with me, over here, uh, hope these don't get blown away, I have more examples of um, some debound parts, some center dog bones, different temperatures, and so on. And I just keep these in there because I like to have some kind of reference so I can show people, um, you know, keep track of ver various versions. I save a couple samples from each one. All right, here we've got another example of a part that didn't print so well. This is an Upa from some kind of anime. Um, I printed this with literally one shell, so 0 0.4 millimeters uh, thickness, because I'm using a Creator Pro nozzle, 0 0.4 millimeters. Uh, one shell vase mode, so this is very light, but it is copper if you, if you conduct it. Um, if you put it on a voltmeter, it does conduct you know, electricity very well, um, but it's obviously not a great part, so you do need some thickness. Here's my first attempt to, I 3D scanned a coin. I guess I will put a, um, you know, cutaway for that maybe. So I have a coin. This is a Roman coin that I scanned, and I've made it way too flat and thin, so it's not the best. And then here's my next attempt, where I made it a little bit thicker, and I, I exaggerated the Z features. And this is after patinaing for a few weeks, I've been keeping in my pocket, and I love this. I, I think this is my favorite print so far. Um, it's really fun to hold in your hand, and uh, it's cool to know that as it ages, it'll get more you know authentic. And it's, this is very solid, very heavy. And we're nearing the end here. This is an example of us uncentered dog bone. And let's see, what have I missed? Um, oh, what are these doing in here? So I've got some logos for my school. Let's try not to drop those. These are uh, mills for bit balls for a uh, ball mill. You know, so here's an example of an uncentered part. A centered part that's been sitting out for several weeks. And then this is a freshly washed centered part. So as we can see, it does age um, quite a bit. It's copper, just like a penny in your pocket. If you put these in a sealed atmosphere, probably they'll stay for longer, but it's, you know, not something you should rely on. And then here's the last part that I actually have to show you that's still here. There are a couple more that I've given away. And this is a copper whistle. And I'm gonna try not to embarrass myself because there's a little quirk, you gotta put your fingers in the right way. But it does work. It's extremely loud in person. Uh, I think because it shrank, uh, you know, maybe it's a little bit more high-pitched. 
There's my whistle, I keep this in my keychain. And then lastly, here we have all of the failed filament. And actually, so now that I've gotten a little more experience, like this little piece that's left over, you can make a part with this. You know, you can make, you know, a head or something with just this little scrap. Um, but the rest of it, most of this is not usable. Uh, this is, you know, failed prints or just nozzle goop. Uh, but yeah, that's what you can make out of 500 grams of filament, copper filament from the Virtual Foundry. Um, so, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.